the 19th of April, you guys will be able to solve quadratic equations by factoring section 7.6. We're finishing off our notes. Like I said, we have our day of review after this. Then we have um, a test day after Good that, day. okay? Yes, yes. So before, last, sec last class, okay, um, last week we went over how to solve these, and then we just did a couple examples on the homework as well, didn't we? Okay, of how to do that. Um, so we did the first seven examples. You guys remember that? Hopefully you guys have this filled out. Okay. And now we're going to continue on. Okay. So we said we needed to have multiplication that equals zero for this zero product property to work. Hence zero has to equal zero. Product has to be multiplication. Well, on this problem, wait, is this equal to zero anymore? No, every time we, everything we've seen have been equal to zero. Okay. Well, sometimes we have to rewrite the equation so it does equal zero. So what's over here instead of zero right now? 5x. So how do we get rid of a 5x? Minus, minus. minus 5x. The same rules we've been following, right? So subtract 5x. Now if I do something to one side, you do it to the other. I do it to the other. Now, as I rewrite 5x over here, is 5x a like term with x squared or 36? No. Zyron say no and I agree with him, okay? It doesn't have the same exponents as squared, and it doesn't have a very it has a variable unlike 36. So, what order am I writing this in? Where is the 5x fitting in between? Is it going first, second, or third? It's going to go second. It's going to go between the two, right? Very good, very good. So we're going to have x squared minus 5x minus 36 equals what's 5x minus itself on the other side? Zero. Zero. Wow, so hard. Hey, Olivia, let's check that out. All right. So now we say, okay, now it's equal to zero, but do we have multiplication yet? No. No. Okay, so we have the zero part, but we don't have the product part of the zero product property. So we need to get it to be multiplication, and we turn it into multiplication by factoring. So how do we factor with three terms? Well, we look for a GCF. Is there one? No. 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 Okay. And so what do we do with three terms, guys? What have we been doing? X. Make an X. Very good, Tucker. And what goes to the top of this x? Negative 36. It's our a times our c, so 1 times negative 36. It's just negative 36. And what goes to the bottom? Negative 5. Uh, not quite. A negative and a positive to get a negative on top. And factors of 36 to add up, or we'll have a difference, actually, because they're different signs of... Five. Now we can write these off to the side if that's going to be helpful for us, guys. One times what? One times 36. Two times. 14. No. 15. No. 15. 17. 18. Three goes into it. I don't know how many times. 12. 12. Four goes into it. Nine and five doesn't go into it, but six does. Six times. So we got them all. Once we hit, once we kind of go back around there, that means we have them all. If we've gone in order, do any of those work for being five apart? Four and nine. Four and nine. Which one's negative? Nine. The nine, because it's a bigger number and it ends up being negative. Can we use our shortcut here? No. Oh heck yeah. So for our shortcut, we make our two parentheses. And what starts each parenthesis? Uh. X. And how do I end my first parenthesis? Minus 9. Minus 9. Olivia. Thank you. And then how do we end our other one? Plus, Plus 4. Plus 4. OK. And it's still equal to 0. So now do we have multiplication that equals 0? Oh, that's Liddy. So when you have multiplication that equals zero, we're at the point to where we can make our two equations. Yay. Can anyone tell me what my first equation would be? Tobin, go ahead. X equals nine. Okay, that's how it ends up being, but what do we get before that? X minus nine equals no. zero. Now, Tobin, you're right as what that ends up being, oh, yeah. but our first step is to say, okay, well, let's just take this factor and set it equal to zero, because we're saying, if things multiply to equal zero, at least one of them has to be zero. If not, both, okay? Lainey, mask up, please. Thank you. All right, what's our other equation going to be? 
x plus 4 equals 0. Very good, you two. Okay, so how do I solve that first equation then, Tobin? Um, x equals 9. Okay, and how do I get x by itself? How do we get negative 9 away? Uh, add it. Add, very good, very good. And then 0 plus 9 is that 9 you're talking about, Tobin. Mm -hmm. And then how do I get x by itself in the other equation, Mason? Wait, 4? Yep. Yep, and x is negative four. four. Very good, very good. So that ends up being our two answers. If we were, yep, good luck. If we were to plug these back in to here, we'd end up getting what we have originally. Any questions on that? All right. So once again, what we had to do the additional step we had today was to first get it equal to zero for the zero product property. Then we had to turn it into multiplication still. Number two, is this equal to zero? No. No. So what do we have to do to get it equal to zero? Subtract 16 from both sides. Very good, very good. 16 minus itself is zero. On the other side, we have a squared minus 16 equals zero. Okay? Questions on why we've done that? Okay, so now this would be like another problem we've had. And so we look to factor because we don't have multiplication. It equals zero, but it's not multiplication that equals zero. And we need to have multiplication for the product, zero product property to work. So we have two things. We look for a GCF, there isn't one. Do we have subtraction? Mm -hmm. So that's a difference. We have two things. Is a squared a perfect square? Yeah, a times a is 16 a perfect square. Six, uh, four times four, so is this a difference of two squares? Yeah, so how many, how many do we factor this one? What's our step here? A minus four. Go ahead. A minus four, and a minus four. Close. A plus four. A plus four. So one's minus, one's plus, I don't care which one's which. That doesn't matter to me. Can be in either order, right Laney? You writing this out? Okay, let's please write it. Thank you. Appreciate your honesty. Yep. All right. Questions on how we've gotten to this point? Okay, raise your hand if you want to tell me the first equation we would write at this point. Okay, Aiden, go ahead. A minus 4 equals 0. Very good, very good, very good. Raise your hand if you want to tell me the other equation at this point. Go ahead, Reagan. A plus 4 equals 0. Very good, very good. All right, now that equation on the left, okay, let me recap real quick. We set each of these factors equal to zero, okay? The equation on the left, how do I solve that one, Zyron? A minus four equals zero. How do I get A by itself? Very good, very good. And A is four. We got our answer there. Okay, the equation on the right, how do we get A by itself there, Maddie? Yep, minus 4. Very good, very good. So we have a is negative 4. And that's our answer. So we have those two answers. If we were to plug those back in, we get to be true. 4 squared, 16. Negative 4 times negative 4, also 16. Any questions on number 2? Okay. Give me a thumbs up if you're feeling good about these, thumbs down if you're not. Be honest with me, be honest with me. Thumbs up if you're feeling good about these, thumbs down if you're not. Okay. And thank you for writing more out. I appreciate that. All right. We're actually going to skip number three. Well, that has three answers if you did it. Number three? Is it no, because it only has a, the highest power is two. I don't feel like we need to do it. No, I, I don't yeah. Okay. Um, we can talk about it after. That's yeah. That's All right, number four. What do we notice is different about number four versus what we've seen e earlier? Okay, it's equal to zero. And what did you say, Tucker? The highest exponent is what? Three. 
So we've, we did say before, when you have an exponent of 2, how many answers are you going to get? 2. So how many answers do we suspect we might get on number 4? Three. 3. I think that might be a good suspicion. Is it already equal to 0, though, like Reagan said? Yeah. So, But we don't have multiplication, so we need to get multiplication. Yeah. Flip it to the very back. Mm -hmm. All right. If we don't have multiplication, though, so we need a factor to get this multiplication. Is there a GCF here? I think there is. What's our GCF? A. a. They all have an A. So we're going to be left with a squared minus 13a plus 42 after you take out 1a. Good find there, Reagan. All right, we make our x for three terms inside the parenthesis. What goes to the top of this x? 42. 42. 1 times 42. What goes to the bottom? Negative 13. If it multiplies to a positive on the top, is that two of the same sign or different signs? Two, okay. two of the same. Now, if it's going to add to a negative, can it be two positives adding to a negative? Nope, it has to be two negatives. Okay? Um, so we need factors of 42 that add to 13. You guys can legit use your calculator. I've been over this a lot with you guys so that you can use your calculators. I want you to if you even. Okay? It does end up being 7 and 6 or 6 and 7, though, okay? If you need help writing them out, feel free to write them out. 1 and 42, 2 and 21, 3 and 14. 4 doesn't go into it, 5 doesn't go into it, 6 and 7. Oh, okay, now we got them all. Now we can use our shortcut here because there's a 1 secretly in front of the a squared, which we love the shortcut. So I keep the a out in front. Can anyone tell me what my first parenthesis is going to be? A minus Very good, very good. And what's my other parenthesis? Very good. And truthfully, I don't care which one of those comes first or second in the parentheses, but as long as one parenthesis is one of them, one parenthesis is the other. So now, do we have multiplication that equals zero? Yeah. And actually, how many things do we have multiplying that equals zero? Three. Three. So how many different equations are we going to set up here? Three, okay. Raise your hand if you want to help me with the first equation. Tucker? Yeah, that's literally the equation. You take whatever's out in front, A equals zero. That one's already done, isn't it? That's dope. What's my next equation? Very good. What's my last equation? Very good. So we already have one answer, so we need to find the others. So how do I find my second answer? Add seven. And A is 7. How do I find my last answer? Same way, add 7. No, add 6, though. And A is 6. So those are my 1, 2, 3 answers. If we get done with this problem and we notice we only had 2 answers, should we notice that eh, we probably need to go back and check something? Yeah, because yeah, the highest power is 3, okay? We should have 3 answers. And we did get 3 answers, which is a good thing. Any questions on that one? Okay. Hey, Tucker, way to take a risk on that, of, of the equation. All right. Number, hmm, let's go with number five. Number five, is this equal to zero yet? No. So what's our very first step then? Minus 20. Minus 20. Get it equal to zero, and in this case, we're going to do that by subtracting 20. If I do it to one side, I have to do it to the other. Is the 20 going first, second, or third here? Third, third. It's going to go third. It's going to go after the x's. 2x squared plus 6x minus 20 equals 0. Thank you. All right. Is there a GCF? Two. Two. And we're going to be left with x squared plus what x? Mm, not quite. x squared plus what x? 6x if we take the 2 out. 3x. Minus what number? 10. 
equals zero. So now inside the parenthesis, can we use the shortcut here when we make our x? Oh, Liddy. Oh, my voice cracked there. Liddy. Uh -uh. Okay. What goes at the top of this x? Negative 10. What goes at the bottom? Three. Three. Is it going to multiply to a negative to the same sign or two different? Different. Negative and positive. Factors of 10. So I'm going to give me two factors of 10. This times this is 10. I don't know. Just give me any factors of 10. 100. 100 is not a factor of 10, silly goose. What times what would give you 10? What times what gives you 10? Yeah. Okay, two times five, that's an example. Who, got, who has another example? Uh, I don't know. One times ten. Do either of these work? Two and five. Two and five. Which one's a negative? Two. 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 These end up being positive, so the bigger number has to be positive. And, like I said, we can use our shortcut. But what can't we forget if we do our shortcut here? Two. The two out in front. So what's my first frequency going to look like here, Tobin? Uh, hmm. You want to phone a friend? Wait, hang on. Okay. Very good, very good. Lane, you got the next one? Um, X plus five. Very good. All right, Tucker, way to or excuse me, Tobin, way to fight through the struggle there. You got stalled, but you found your way out. I love it. Yep. All right, so now, wait, how many things do we have multiplying? Three. Three. But wait, what's our highest power? Two. Two. Okay. Well, let's set up these equations. What would our first equation be? <laughs> Actually, two equals zero. Wait, does two equal zero though? That two out in front does two equal zero? No. Will that ever be true? So you're going to say it doesn't equal zero and rule it out and then keep going from there, okay? So we can rule that out so it's not actually going to be an answer. So how many answers are we going to end up with? Two. Two. Okay, so that we're back to normal. Okay. Okay. Talk your dad my other, next equation. Oh, back up a step. X minus two equals zero. All right. And what would be my last equation here? Aiden? Hmm? What would be my last equation here? X plus 5 equals 0. Very good, very good, very good. Now we have to solve those, other, those two equations that are true. How do I solve that first, or excuse me, that middle equation, X minus 2 equals 0? Add 2. Add 2. And like Tucker was trying to sneak in there earlier, X is 2. And how do I solve my last equation? Subtract 5. Five. Is negative five. Tucker, did you say the same way? Yeah. We did not add two to both sides on the last one. It's not the same way. Wait, no, it's not five. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Any questions on number five, guys? Okay. Once again, check to see if it equals zero. If it doesn't, make it equal zero. If there's not multiplication, make multiplication by factoring. Then you set up your equations. Mace, put it away, please. Thanks. All right. Number six. Is number six equal to zero? Yeah. No. We have to get it equal to zero. How? Plus four. Add four, because it's negative this time. And where is this plus four going? First, second, third? Second. Third. Third. Doesn't have an X, so it goes at the end. X squared plus 4X plus 4 equals, what's negative 4 plus 4? Zero. zero. That's why we did that. We want it to be zero. So now, is there a GCF? Mm -hmm. There is? No. no. So we make an X here for three terms. What goes at the top? Four. four. A times C, 1 times 4. What goes at the bottom? Four. Also 4. Okay. If it's going to multiply to a positive, Two, po two of the same, excuse me, or two different? Two of the same. And it's going to add to a positive. Are they both going to be positive or both going to be negative? Both going to be positive. So we know it's going to be two positives. What are two factors of four that add to four? Two, two, two. 
2 and 2. Can we use our shortcut here again? Liddy. Zyron, do you know what my first parenthesis is going to be here? Uh, I didn't do that problem. Oh. Well, do you know what my first parenthesis would be here now? X plus 2. There you go. You had it. Nice. Maddie, what would my next parenthesis be? Is that what you're going to say, Tobin? Yeah. Nice. And do these end up being the same? Yeah. Yeah, we don't want to write the squared thing here, though, because we want to keep going with our problem because we have it equal to 0. So now we have multiplication that equals 0. So we want to finish this baby out. So we say, okay, well, what do I do with the first parenthesis? Well, before I subtract, I have to make it an equation, right? Okay, and then what's my other equation? The same thing. So how do I solve this first equation? Subtract 2. X is negative 2. How do I solve my other one? Two. This one's actually the same way. So these are the same thing, right? Yeah. That's weird, okay. So you can say one of two things. You can either do your answer like this, or you can say x is negative 2 and point out the fact that it's what we call a double root. We call this a double root. So you could point it out and say, hey, that's a double root. When you have an answer twice, when you have an x that's the exact same thing, we call it a double root, or dr for short, okay? You don't have to, though. So if you're like, Mr. Gosselin, I don't think I'm going to remember that. Okay, you don't have to call it that. You can write your answer twice. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, any questions? All right, let's go and get that homework back out. And on this worksheet, I'm actually going to assign the rest except for... Number three and one. Okay, so I'm going to assign the rest of the worksheet. I'll write this on here. Yeah. Rest of worksheet. W slash S means worksheet. Except for numbers one and three.